Emily there in Hong Kong. We'll hear in London. We have Anderson Chan, who was number two under Chris Patton during Hong Kong's transition from British to Chinese rule. She carried on as chief secretary after the handover. And Martin Jakes, author of When China Rules the World. Evening to you both. Um, look, first of all, I just want to establish, has China reneged on its pledges? Anderson Chan, you were there when these pledges were being made. Has China, is China breaking the contract or not? Yes. Clearly, the people of Hong Kong believe that to be so. We're seeing increasingly blatant interference from Beijing. What has happened to one country, two systems? A high degree of autonomy. We're seeing less and less autonomy for the people of Hong Kong and more and more interference from Beijing. Did We've seen promise? the issue of the white paper where China states it has comprehensive jurisdiction over Hong Kong and in effect telling us what little autonomy we enjoy is for China to give and take away at its pleasure. But just very specifically, did they promise there would they, they promised there'd be universal suffrage? We all agree on that, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Did they promise that it would be universal suffrage for an open an open list of candidates? Well, look at the basic law. It's stated in black and white. What does universal suffrage mean? The right not only to vote, but to stand for election. It goes on to say the nominating committee must be broadly representative and nomination has to be okay. through a democratic process. How do they get out of the... What's the fine print that makes you think it's... Well, art, Article 45, um, which is the relevant article in the basic law, uh, says there'll be universal suffrage. Um, the, nomin the, the nominations will be put forward by the nominating committee. Um, a representative uh, nominating committee. We don't, we don't yeah, want to get too yeah, deeply yeah, into yeah. it. Uh, uh, but it left so, them a bit uh, of actually, wiggle room, basically, well, actually, didn't it? It left them wiggle room, Of right? course it did, yeah. because okay. the yes, Chinese... But Martin, you cannot pretend that the 1,200 nominating committee, the bulk of whom are in Beijing's pockets, can in any way be defined as broadly representative. This is at the nub of it all. Well... The, we can think for ourselves, we see what is happening. It is, as far as, the, as far as Hong Kong's history is concerned, certainly broadly representative. But the other thing I want to say, which well, is where well, I strongly... So that's where the well, argument... Sorry, it has clear, not been a lot broadly of people, No, no, there's, some, that's where there's the another disagreement key is, disagreement, okay, which well. is about the notion of one country, two systems. Because Anson's saying that the Chinese have not respected this. This was a remarkable innovation. It came from the Chinese, and it was the idea that for 50 years... Uh, Hong Kong would, because of its history, continue to exercise uh, autonomy in lo a large number of areas. And I disagree with Anson about this. I think the Chinese have respected and honoured this to an extraordinary degree. It doesn't, it doesn't say enjoy a high degree of autonomy in a number of areas. It states specifically, other than foreign relations and defence, in all other areas, Hong Kong will enjoy a high degree of autonomy. And it has done. That's exactly what's happening. I mean, it's not, it's not like China, is it? I mean, it's not like no, the rest of look China. Look at it's what quite Lu Ping said time and again when asked about democratic reforms. He said that's entirely for the Hong Kong people to decide what has happened to that Well, now, now. you're contradicting yourself because you're not. agreeing I that they've not. granted considerable... Well, no, he, he said that they wouldn't and they didn't offer it. I think... I th but look, Martin, what do the Chinese fear? OK, so let's suppose you're right for a minute and that they, they're not reneging on their deal. Let's suppose well, they're that. not reneging. OK, for sake of argument, let's accept that. What do they think? What's wrong with letting the, the, the Hong Kong people select their own candidates and vote for whoever they Well, I'll tell you what they're concerned what, about. What's I mean, the, th the thing about one country, two systems was that... And, and, and indeed the handover from Britain to China was that Hong Kong is a part of China. It's a sovereign part of China which, under the decisions of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, would enjoy certain rights that we've been discussing in terms of the autonomy. Now, what the Chinese are obviously concerned about, and I think one can understand this concern, is that a chief executive that's elected is not hostile to China, and they're very clear about that. And, you know, under, so, under Chinese sovereignty, one can, one can appreciate it. Why do you take that as a given, Martin? Hmm? Well, they may, fundamentally, may not... fundamentally, you're saying we don't trust the people of Hong Kong. Well, give us the vote and we will prove to you we will elect a chief executive who can work with China and still earn the support of the Hong Kong people. The problem Somebody is that you might is... elect the one they don't want. You might elect one who causes no, trouble. No, or election, makes no election is 100% guaranteed. Hmm? You're in, in effect saying to us, well, except a rigged election. This we will not well, accept. 
that, 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 I guess that was Martin's point. How difficult would it be for China if Hong Kong did vote for a candidate who, for example, it's, wanted it's to hold two fingers up It's not difficult at all, bearing in mind that in the final analysis, the decision to appoint or not appoint somebody elected through one man, one vote rests with Beijing. So if they don't like the candidate that Hong Kong people have elected, they can say, sorry, mm. we don't like this person, we're not going to appoint him. That's mm. the end of the matter. You're a bit fed up with this Western narrative on this, aren't you, I think, Martin? You think we, we always support the democracy protesters. Is that your well, I, I, basic I, I, thing? Well, I, I think... You're a contrarian on these things. Uh, well, only in the context of maybe this little island. <laughs> I mean, the thing is that uh, I think that, that we, we, we've, you know, we've not made in general nearly sufficient effort to understand China, uh, appreciate what China is. We, 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 so, th so we never really get to grips with it. So, for example... No, I'm going to have to stop you there, Mark. I'm so sorry. I was just getting I know, but you've made the, the wind point. in my you sails. Made the, you, made the, the, you made the point so well. Martin Jakes, Anson Chan, thank you both very much indeed.